try something a little bit different here. I am going to show some details of my sketch before I actually show you the fast forward sketch itself. I want to talk about how I've studied bricks and stones and lines and shapes and shades today. And I thought by doing that, I'll show you some details of my finished drawings and go through a discussion of them. And then in my next video, I'll actually show the fast forward process and the finished pictures. So I hope that you enjoy this. If you don't, well, there's always the next page. So this is a study of bricks and stones, lines, shapes, and shades. Hi there. I am out urban sketching again today. Yesterday, when I was out sketching at phone booth, I drove by this on my way home. Only I saw it on the other side of the road where you just saw that truck pass by. And I thought that might be fun to sketch if I could get in the parking lot where I'm seated now. And so it's fairly early in the morning. The stores haven't opened yet. So I got a perfect parking spot. What I like about this is you see the brick of the, the fence pole and the iron of the fence. And then in the background, you see a brick and wooden apartment building, but you also see the stone fence, which is kind of a retaining wall. See that stone fence? There'll be some fun studies of stones here. And today I'm going to think and chat about bricks and stones. When I came home last night and I looked at the comments on my videos, Mary W made a very interesting comment about the bricks on the church that I did, not in my last video, but in my previous video, and uh, talking about representing bricks. And I thought she made an interesting comment about not drawing every little brick in the building or, or just drawing lines to represent bricks. So I thought I would dwell on that a little bit more and expand on it a little bit more there is one thing I want to say, though. When I do my sketching, I, I call my sketching and my drawing intuitive drawing in the sense that when I'm sketching and drawing, I'm not consciously, consciously determining all the rules of drawing while I'm drawing. They, you know, I've read rules and I've, I've studied different drawings and I think all of that is in my subconscious. And so I don't consciously make the decisions that, oh, I'm not going to draw every little brick in the building. So a lot of my art that you see in my drawings, for lack of a better term, I call it intuitive drawing. This is not the only how to do something. This is how I do it at the time. And to be honest with you, sometimes I'm not even really consciously thinking about it. Sometimes I am thinking about it, but I'm not making a big deal over it. But when I'm out sketching, to be honest with you, I'm just out having fun. I, I don't sit and determine all the rules. And I think a large part of that shows up that, um, I guess the term for it might be loose sketching, loose painting. Um, I call them sketches. They're not fine art paintings. And although I do put a lot of color on my page, I think I do it unconsciously. I, uh, subconsciously maybe. I just love color. <laughs> so, but I want to spend some time here talking about bricks and stones. And some ways that you might, if you were working on it, and if you were thinking about it, some ways that you may represent bricks and stones. Now the stones here, if you observe them in front of us, you will see these stones are piled in three tiers. Three tiers. And between each stone, there is a very dark shadow, which we might represent as a line, a dark line, especially if you were putting this in a 
especially if you were putting this in a stained glass window. But actually, and this is something uh, that has, that is discussed in drawing classes, that shadow behind the line is not really dark lines. There are no physical lines, like up here on the fence post, they, there are very definite lines. Down here, the lines are formed by shadows. And so the difference between doing this fence post and doing the lines between these bricks might be a very different drawing technique. You may do hard lines to do the fence post, and here you may build up the lines by building up shadow. And I, I will try to do that in my study drawing that I'm doing, going to do next. Just some things to think about while you're drawing and or some things to study. I would call this more of a study than uh, a subconscious <laughs> a subconscious sketch or an intuitive drawing. Here I'm I'm looking at it a little bit closer and say, okay, I'm going to try to represent these stones by building up the shadow between the bricks and contrast them with the hard lines of the fence by drawing hard lines for the fence. Now I'm showing you a very far away view. You are not going to see as much detail of the bricks. You might see a little bit more of the stones because they're directly in front of me. But the bricks in the brick building before behind us, you can hardly see any detail, although your mind knows that that's a brick wall. I guess what I wanna say is, think about it. Think about it after you draw it, but while you're drawing it, sometimes when you're go, going out and having fun, don't dwell on it so much that it limits your, oh, look, look. There's a little bird. Oh, he flew away. There was a little bird on that, on that cement topper. <laughs> he knew I was going to shoot a picture of him, so he flew away. But don't, try to, try to just relax and have fun go with the flow of your picture. Uh, I think sometimes we try so hard to make something so beautiful, and I know I found this in myself, that I lose that intuitiveness of the drawing. And I lose that loose feeling, and I think that really does affect my drawing. I want it to be so perfect that it becomes less and less perfect and less and less a really fun art piece. So just talking and chattering about intuitiveness and intuitive drawing, more or less saying, this is a stone wall and I'm sketching it and this is how, you know, I, I can't even say that I would say this is how I'm going to approach it. I just put my, my brush to the paper and represent it. And that's kind of what I mean personally by intuitive art. I'm not sure that there is a formal definition of it. I never really researched it. You're just drawing it out from your experience. Your experience as you are seated drawing the piece. And intuitive is coming from within. And from within may involve all your other prior experiences things that you've heard about art, things that people have commented on your other drawings. It's, it's, or it may not. It may just be your experience, right, when you are drawing that. It's just something to think about. I want to go back to the church that I did the other day, and because that church is made up of all brick walls. But there's a lot of bricks. There's a lot of <laughs> things to study with bricks and stone walls, even right outside my own living space. Now, I got out my larger sketchbook that I worked on the other day. wanted to talk a little bit about doing the bricks. Now you can see on here, the bricks on here, or the stones on here, are represented by lines. And one thing that I did on this that I really like is that I did little where I thought those rows of stone where I wanted to represent the edge of them. I did little, like little nicks 
in there. And that suggested an uneven wall formed by the bricks. And then the roof, the roof was totally lines here, just little half crosses almost, and just little representational lines. Now, I will say I did this very fast and very intuitively, not really thinking too much, just wanting to get something on there to represent a textured surface of the bricks. This is what I talk about when I'm saying I'm doing it intuitively. I think the day when I study it, I'll probably do a little bit more detailed study, and I might do it in this large book. Now, I was looking at other bricks. Now, the, this, this shopping mall, these were certainly either brick or brick veneer, but I don't have any lines in there. They're very much a soft, smooth colored surface wall. This was my last sketch of the day, and I will say I was getting kind of tired. But I do like it. It looks very much like a, an Edward Hopper painting, doesn't it? <laughs> no bricks on the tractor. The bricks on this fountain, although here again, I wish I would have had more time to study this fountain. It's okay for what it is. I like this area in here the best. But look at the bricks, how I, how, and here again, they're big flat stones along the fountain, how I represented them, both with color and with lines. I actually drew lines and drew lines back here. So you do it in different ways. On this one, there were no bricks except for on the sidewalk. And here again, just little lines in there to represent the texture more than anything. There's a stone retaining wall here. I have both color shadow and lines in there. The rest of it is not brick. I did use lines to represent the roof here. The building behind the trolley certainly has brick lines and I was a little bit more a little bit more thoughtful about putting my lines in there, but I certainly did not draw out each and every brick. I was just putting in the lined texture. The bricks on my donation window. Here, I did a very detailed study of them. Both the red bricks here, and I got the white lines for the mortar between them, and then the, the big, larger, white brick stones here. My stone fence here, I was building up the shadow like I did on this one today, only maybe not quite as detailed. I think I went into it a lot more detail here, but you can see I'm putting in the shadow here. But I also used my ink pen to define the outlines of the brick to give it a, a definition between the grassy field and the stone fence. <laughs> Here again, let me put this aside. On this building was certainly a brick building. No definition of bricks in here at all. It's just all color. Your eye just kind of tells you by the color that it is a brick building. Same way with this. No definition of the brick other than maybe the stone ledges up here. And then the background, certainly this building is far enough in the background that you would not see the bricks anyway. Just a blotch of color. Fast sketching. On the Galena Railroad Station, yes. Now, I think this is probably a little bit more about what Mary was talking about as putting in the detail on the bricks with the lines and not putting in each and every brick. It just gives it a hint. And of course, these are bricks in the background. This was a brick stone building, but certainly no definition of bricks in there. It's all colored. This was very fast. 
I've already showed you what I'm going to sketch. I filmed that and I've kind of chatted about it. I thought I would dwell just a little bit more today on studying them. And let me tell you, it is such a beautiful day out. I, the end of summer is here. I, I've got this urban sketching <laughs> fever because I know that fall is going to be here and then the cold winter. So I just have been going outside and doing urban sketching. <laughs> So this is the first detail that I want to show you. And these are big stones. This was a big stone retaining wall. And I actually did this in my little quick sketch book. And that measures 8 inches by 5 and a half inches. And I, it's a wired bound sketchbook. But here, what I'm trying to accomplish here, and if you can follow my cursor, see it's off over to the left, if you follow it here, when I was doing these stones, I built them up with layers of color. These are not lines. These are build up of shades and color. And if you take a formal drawing class, you will probably have this discussed in a drawing class, how objects are really not defined by lines like a stone here does not in real life have a black line on the edge of it it's the way the light hits the shape of the stone and then with the watercolor you can see in here where i built up the texture of the stone so i wanted to show that to you that's what i was trying to accomplish on this stone fence. Now the next one was the fence, an, an iron fence, and I actually did do hard lines on here. Now that, granted my lines are not perfectly straight, but this is a sketch. I did not mean them to be perfectly straight. So I did not, I would not say that this is precision at all. And I will say this wire binding over here when I'm doing urban sketching and watercoloring, that wire binding bothers me a lot. It it guides my hand and makes it makes marks like this and like this up here that I don't intend to make. But it's a sketch and in the end it doesn't bother me because I know this is not a finished painting. But if you contrast the way the hard lines on this fence and that's why I'm saying a study of lines. This hard fence actually is hard lines. But if you look at this one, there are no hard lines in here. The shape of this stone is a buildup of color and shading. Now if you go to the next one, I went back and I worked on that church that I worked on the other day, the St. Peter's Catholic Church. And here you can see that my bricks are actually shapes of color right here. See there's a shape in here and a shape in there. And even though the, this is a soft line done with my watercolor brush down the center here, but there are hard lines right there. So that's another way to represent it. And then, of course, hard lines done with my ink pen, the top sill of the window and the bottom window sill. And then there's a soft line in there. And in here, there's a combination of shape and color that gives an impression of a brick wall. And you can really see this when you do a close-up of it. And then... In here, way over off over to the left side here, way over here, you get that color representing the shadow of the brick and the shading of the brick. And the color and the shape of your color can, especially in watercolor, can give you the impression of bricks too. Here I did the same type of lines. I call them little notched lines to form the... Um, outside of the brick wall only in keeping them hard or or more distinct like I did here I took a towel 
a, a, a paper towel napkin and after I applied the color I blotted it off so there's just a very soft faint shadow of the brick now the next one You can see the same thing. I do tend when I'm detailing these bricks. See, I have some lines in there. You do not need to get every line of every brick of every stone. It's a, a drawing technique. And that's what I'm doing. I'm drawing with my watercolors. I'm sketching with my watercolors. But it is a drawing technique just to give a suggestion of the bricks. And that's what's going on on this entire page. I did not sit and try to draw every brick in here. You just want to give a suggestion. And I used a darker color and more distinct lines over here where the shadow of the wall fell. And then in the center, there's right in here, there's more of a lighter color. And this is the this is the door and then this is the top area of the door and I really liked how my paintbrush I was just able to do a suggestion of the you could call them bricks or stones the stone wall here and then this was in shadow in here and you'll see this in my next video on the finished page let's look at the last one the last one is this is actually a rooftop and the tiling of the rooftop fell into diagonals and actual little diamonds now the lines here I did use lines but if you were actually to study this piece if the real live wall does not have lines it has areas of color and it has some I brought some area of color if you look at the the video that I'm going to show you in well, if, even if you look at the one I showed at the beginning of this video, this area of this roof has very much of a rusty red color in there. I really like that. I made a, I toned it down a lot. But look at how what I did with the bricks in this area, the stones. I just kind of blotted them. I gave a suggestion of stones and bricks here. So that is really what I wanted to talk about in this video was using color to build up a line without drawing a hard line versus a hard line that I did for the fence here and soft a combination of color shading to form the bricks and lines another way you can define the bricks you're just giving a suggestion that this is a brick wall or a stone wall and I really like this area I really do like this area in here I think it I really accomplished probably more detail on this than of the painting that I did the, the sketch that I did up for the other day and I said painting and I do want to reiterate that these are not paintings these are sketches I'm doing them in a very watercolor painterly mode, but this is not what I would consider a finished watercolor.